Okay, so midweek on Tuesday night, we are obviously playing Liverpool. We're heading to Anfield uh, for a tough European night uh, against Liverpool. And it's it's going to be tough because Liverpool have come into form just just before the, these two games. Um, they, they, in the two games before this match against Newcastle and against Everton, they've both won both of those games uh, 2-0. And... Liverpool look suddenly like a, like a, a solid side again. Now we don't know whether this is just a purple patch of form or whether this is permanent. But it, my guess would be that this is a permanent change in form from Liverpool. So I think we'll have to take Liverpool seriously again. I don't and I don't think Real Madrid weren't taking Liverpool seriously, but we are going to have to take Liverpool properly seriously. Um, and suddenly it looks like. Real Madrid aren't ex exactly in the best of form. You know, we won yesterday against Osasuna and it was it was a, a solid win. But it was at times where it was looking very ropey for us. And, you know, we always struggle at El Sadar and, and it looked like one of those games where it was just going to end nil-nil. Um, fair play to Osasuna. They came at us. They, they attacked us. Um, and, you know, there was a goal to be had on Osasuna's side. You know, there was definitely chances that they could have taken and they could have definitely nicked that game from us but ultimately when as soon as we scored 1-0 I think it was game over because they were looking to push forward and they just they left they left spaces behind and yeah it was it, maybe the 2-0 wasn't representative of the game but uh I think uh, ultimately that's a, that's a game where you just you just take the win and move on to be honest so what are your thoughts on the result against us as as a whole yeah, I think it was an important uh, win because, of course, we've been at our best, especially in the league, and we've been slipping a lot of points. So it was a win that we needed. We end up five points being Barcelona. And so, so we don't know. We still don't know what can happen. It's too early to give up on the league, in my opinion. So we have to keep trying. So this was an important win for us. You know, of course, I would have loved if we can play better for uh, more of the game, especially as we have a big Champions League game coming up. You know, however, we we had to, we have been made to wait. We have been made to look through like a lot of the inconsistencies. You know, until like we actually hit form. You know, I honestly hope that it's not something that cost us in the in the Champions League, of course. And I know that. Um, I know that it's difficult, you know, to maintain intensity because we have been playing better and with more intensity as of late. You know, but of course, you know, um, well, of course, you'd have loved, you know, to actually have like a really good performance, you know, before um, you have a tough game, you know, just for confidence. But um, I'm sure the team, I'm sure, I'm sure the team would feel motivated for this Liverpool game. So, so let, let's just hope that um, they don't have like a slow start or anything like that. Yeah. And uh, let's let's talk about this this lineup that we we both said for for Liverpool. Um, and in goal, let's start with it. Courtois had a brilliant performance yesterday against Osasuna. Uh, Liverpool always generate shots, so it's going to be important that Courtois saves a lot. So, what are your thoughts on Courtois' upcoming game against Liverpool, and also as well as you know the performance against Osasuna? Yeah, he had a good performance, comfortable. You know, he wasn't shaky um, this time. Um, considering from the last time he was injured, he wasn't shaky this time, so that's a positive. So I'm hoping that he is at the front of the big performance in the Champions League night. Yeah, hundred percent. So let's move on to the four, back four. Now this is an area of deliberation for Real Madrid, and the the problems lie with um, with the left back and right back. I don't think you know and the centre backs are dependent on that as well. Um, the problem is Carvajal is a liability against Liverpool. You've got uh, Darwin Nunez and and Cody Gak, uh, who are both who are both good players. Maybe miss chances, but they're both quick. They both they can both take advantage of Danny Carvajal on the right side. So you are asking, do you play Danny Carvajal or Nacho there? Um, but then you, if you play Nacho there, the left back you got another issue. No, no follow Mendy, and that means Alaba is most likely going to have to go there. So your centre back is going to stuck with. You're gonna be stuck with the uh, Militao and Rudiger, who, let's be honest, they're they're both good centre backs, but you know there are questions about them working well together. So uh, let's do the back four as a whole. And um, for me, I've gone for a back four of uh, Nacho uh, to the centre back pairing of um, Rudiger and Militao, and then a left back of Alaba, a back four of centre backs. But 
ultimately, I think that's the best thing we could do right now. Maybe some would put Carl Howe, you know, we saw last season against Luis Diaz, he had a, he had a brilliant performance against Luis Diaz, but... I think it's too much of a risk putting Carvajal at right back, and it is a risk putting Nacho at right back as well. But it's it's about damage limitation on that side. And um, so, what, who have you gone for as your back four? Yeah, well, um, to make it easier, um, I'm sure that he did touch, confirm that Carvajal is going to start against Liverpool. Um, but my plan wasn't to start him if I was a manager. If it was my decision, I think Nacho has been more reliable over the past few weeks. And I might have stuck with Nacho. Um, so my full, my um, background would have been the exact same one as yours. Because we don't have a choice but to um, stick with Alabad left back and Letao and Tony in centre back. So, yeah, I would have put Nacho because he is more informed player over. Uh, we've seen the last time we have put Cabajal into a big game, which was a classic one, a Super Cup final, and he wasn't. At his best, you know, he was tear apart, you know, and it's going to be disappointing if we see that again, if we follow the same trend and we see that again, you know. So I think Nacho has quelled all of the Benicius to Ives um, um, talk um, because he's been good, you know. However, I think if Carvajal starts and performs poorly, I think we're going to have that back, in my opinion. So let's just hope that he does well. You know, um, because of course we support Madrid. Um, even if we want like some of the youngsters to play, we really need them to do well. You know, first to move forward. So I'd have to go Cabral. If he's starting, we have to support him. But my my pick was not sure. Yeah, at this point there is no room for error. And as much as I want Vinicius to buy us to get a chance, I can't. We can't afford Cabral to have a bad game and slip up. So, I mean, I want to talk about Darwin Nunez. And uh, Cody Hakpo and those two, they've the Cody Hakpo has struggled uh, in, the, in his first few, f- few games, but he started to score and started to get into his rhythm. Darwin Nunez was ultimately a meme at the start of the season. However, we know that Real Madrid struggled to to contain strikers like that. It's never been the problem of movement for Darwin Nunez. It's never been the problem of generating chances for Darwin Nunez. It's been the problem of him putting the the chances in the back of the net. We've had players like Timo Werner score game after game against us. You know, I can Every single time Dino, Timo Werner heads to Real Madrid, he just scores. And I think it could be a similar story against Darwin Nunez. I think Darwin Nunez could could really get his get his chances away against us. And Liverpool has I've scored plenty of their goals in transition, and they've created a lot of chances in transition, which is also where Real Madrid struggles to contain teams. Um, this season, this season they have really looked bad in transition defensively, and you know they really look susceptible to counter attacks. So, what are your thoughts on containing Darwin Nunez and and uh, Cody Hakpo? Yeah, um, that's going to um, have to, I think, in my opinion, you know, be a difficult task um, for our defense because, of course, let's be honest, they haven't gelled like we expected them to this season. There have been um, mistakes which um, small teams in the league have punished. And of course, if you look at the latest game that Liverpool played, Nunes and Gakpo scored within the first 15 minutes. You know, and of course, I think if it's at Anfield, they're going to be energetic. They're going to be making those those runs early on. I think that if you have to just stay alert, the defence, the midfield, um, the Wing a striker mark in the next year, San Valverde. I think if you have to, if you stay alert for the first 30 minutes, it's going to, you know, calm them down, take us out of the pressure. Similar to what we did to Diaz, in my opinion, in the final. If you can contain them for the first 30 minutes, first 20 minutes, it becomes easier to contain them for the entire 90 minutes. So um, I would really hope that there isn't any, like, silly mistakes, you know. Um, like any um, poor choices, you know, that can cost us, in my opinion. We have to be alert because it's not like um, the, some of the goals we have conceded this season. It's been like mistakes that's avoidable. So so let's just hope that we can stay alert for the first 20 minutes. Then, of course, step by step, we can um, we can go into the game at Anfield and have a good positive performance against these um, attackers because you saw what they're capable of in the last game especially on the counter-attack as well. 
But I don't think that should be an issue for us because I, I'm not seeing us, you know, pushing high up the pitch. Um, well, at least uh, we haven't done that um, in big Champions League matches. So let's let's see what happens. You know, of course we would like us to take chances and stuff, but you know, I don't think that now is the time. You know, to do something that we haven't done in a while, especially against Liverpool. You know, um, it's not like we are a team that's openly working hard and testing high. We barely do it um, efficiently in La Liga. Yes, we're doing it a little bit better now, you know, with the players like Ceballos and Camavinga. Um, we're doing it a bit better now, but to, to do it against Liverpool, I expect us to, um, to do it expertly. I don't think we can, so we'll have to be a bit more, you know, um, laid back. Not laid back as in like relaxed, but playing a bit deeper. Yeah. Um, now we move on to the midfield, and this is a real dilemma. And this is this hasn't happened in years where Real Madrid have a genuine selection dilemma in the whole team. Um, but the midfield is the main dilemma, and Cruz is out. Cruz is probably going to miss this game. I don't think I would risk him um, just to make sure he's back because he always performs really well against Liverpool, um, and he, I think he'll be really valuable for the second leg. So for me. The midfield three. I think Shuomeni is undroppably missed the game due to flu this this weekend. Um, but the other two, I think, for me, I would go for Fede Valverde and Modric. And Modric playing that Cruz role. Obviously, no one can play that Cruz role because no one has the passing range of Tony Cruz. But you've got to try something, and I think Modric is the best to 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 be able to try and and execute that role to perfection and. In terms of Kamavinga and Ceballos not starting, I think they've both been fantastic and undroppable, but it's, it's more about having them to come off the bench, having them you know, to impact the game just, you know, if, if we're leading or if we're losing, they both impact the game positively. So what, what would you go for in that midfield three? Yeah, it's, it's a difficult one, in my opinion. It really is. You know, um, I think... To be honest, I, I might just go for Kamavinga or for Tony Cruz, in my opinion, just for this game. You know, because of course I think he's in form. I think Tony, um, I'm not too sure if he if he was sick and took a while to to get better. I think um, two games he's missed now. I don't know if he will be like up for the intensity. And this isn't me saying that he can't do it. But if he isn't at fully 100%, I don't think we should start him, in my opinion. The good news is that last season, there wasn't anyone in the midfield to come on because Valverde was a starter, like, to come on, other than Kamabinga. And it took us a while for Ceballos to get into form and be trusted. But now Ceballos is doing well, and we can trust Ceballos to come on in midfield and have an impact. And actually, I saw a latest report um, by Marcus stating that that's the plan for the Champions League. You know, so I think that maybe it means that Ancelotti has plans for Kamavinga maybe to start some of the big matches. I think he's a more informed midfielder than the others at this time. So I think, in my opinion, I would go for Chulamani because we need his defensive stability. You know, Chulamani, Modric and Kamavinga for the first leg. And on the second leg, if Tony is back and he is uh, um, in form and he is and he is not like sick or injured, um, I would start him, of course, you know. But now, you know, I think Kamavinga is the man for me, in my opinion. Yeah, I think Kamavinga. I think for me, I would I would bring him off the bench, and you know, things might change. Things might change for the second leg. But for me, I think it's so valuable to cover him off the bench. And against the Liverpool team, where the midfield is struggling, it's properly struggling. Fabinho, Bajsicic and uh, and Thiago or, or someone else, they all struggle quite a lot. And it looks really bad in that midfield. So suddenly we're, we're going to have to take advantage of that. And I think Real Madrid's midfield is far superior. So... I think this is where the game is won or lost for Real Madrid. If we can really take hold of that midfield, then it's wrapped for Liverpool, in my opinion. Um, then the front three, Benzema's looking a bit of a doubt. However, I do believe he'll probably make it, um, even if it's at 60%. And I, I think it's just, he's too valuable to miss. Because you saw it once again today, Vinny's, Vinny's um, link-up with Rodrigo is just not as good as with Benzema. 
and Benzema as a whole. I think Benzema's struggling this season. He scored, he's he's only like a couple behind Lewandowski in the in the Pichichi race, but it it is not the same. He's scoring penalties, which is obviously penalties count. Penalties are fantastic the, for for his goal tally, but ultimately at the end of the day. You've got to take away the penalties, and then you look at it and you say, "Yeah, he isn't. He isn't looking sharp. He isn't finishing the same way as he was last season, and he is struggling in that way." So, and then you move on to the wingers. I mean, you could play Fede on the right. I I would play Rodrigo on the right because I think a more natural right back fit would be would be really really good for the right wing fit. Should be would be really good for this this game. And I think Fede from the midfield is very valuable in this game against Liverpool, who when Fede can match their intensity, then you look at Vinny and then Vinny against Trent. I've got real criticisms of Vinny. And I think, well, first of all, we'll talk about the front three. So what are your thoughts on the on your front three for this game? Yeah, well, I'll start off with Benzema. And in my opinion, I'm getting a bit of deja vu from last season when he wasn't fit for the PSG first leg. And it's clear he wasn't fit and of course um, it impacted the way he played and he wasn't 100%. You know, and of course he struggled without him, so I'm getting a bit of deja vu um, from that because of course at this moment he isn't at his best. So let's hope that, you know, it was just, you know, um, a, a precaution and not the injury that we are covering up for him. You know, um, so if he's at his best, of course, Benzema starts for me. Um, like you said, his link up with Vinicius is excellent. He opened up space for them a lot, you know. So, of course, it's Benzema, Vinicius. And for me, um, I think the way we play um, with Ergico, he Ergico is best when um, Major that is a position and he can, you know, jump into, the, into these spaces, you know, um, link up with his teammates. I don't know how much in that he's going to get early on in the game, in my opinion. So that's why I um, didn't select Valverde from my midfield because I think the way we're going to set up and the only way we can play is, well, we can play at other ways, but I think the way Ancelotti is going to play is by, you know, um, I think Ancelotti might just, you know, play a bit more counter-attacking. I think Valverde might be better off for that. Especially if Fajico can come on and then when Madrid um, will have more possession as the game open up, um, he can have a bigger impact. I would hate it if he starts and he doesn't have a big impact because he don't have much of the ball, in my opinion. So for me, um, unfortunately, Fajico uh, uh, is doing well. Um, just like I'm having hands by us, you know, of course it's a decision that has to be made, in my opinion. You know, um, I think he, if he starts, I don't think he'd be in the best possible position for him to succeed. Yeah, but... Um, um, we've also got to remember that you look at this, the game against Osasuna, that it was just... It was really dire until Alvaro Rodriguez came on. You know, we we just couldn't bypass Osasuna and it was really, really, really struggling. Um, and you've got to look at it and say, Vinicius Jr., you've got to step up in that moment. But I think Vinny got carried away in the moment. Obviously, most people would. And I think, you know, this is not about the racism, but in terms of just facing Osasuna as an opponent, they were getting into his head and he was just, he he wasn't taking it right. He wasn't, he wasn't doing, it's, 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 it's hard, but he, they were getting into his head. And they were doing exactly what they wanted to do, which is winding him up, and it worked. It worked to perfection. I think Vinny, in that point, you've got to just, to, in order to silence them, in, instead of just trying to take it around the goalkeeper and do something extravagant, just just finish it. Just finish your chances, because Vinny had two good chances in the second half where he could have just smashed it past Sergio Herrera, and he would have he would have just silenced the the Osasuna crowd, the Osasuna players, but. He didn't. He didn't. He just he tried something extravagant in order to just to 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 look to look fantastic, and that is the type of player he is. He is the, he is an entertainer on the pitch, but sometimes you just gotta just smash it and just shut them up in that way because that's the, sometimes the only way. And I think Vinny's that goal at the end would have been perfect, but it wasn't to be. So, what are your thoughts on Vinny's performance and what he could do against Liverpool? I think against Liverpool, he would be, I wouldn't say more serious um, because I think he had a game where he would try his best, you know, to, um, 
to try and get in the indigenous positions that she did. So kudos to them on that. But of course, some of these misses, of course, you can't afford that in the big matches, in my opinion. Of course, Ajibo also had some misses, but it was a bit like more difficult chances. I think, um, I think Vinicius, I think hopefully this is a learning. Um, that That's just a learning phase for him. He's not going to be prolific um, for most of the season, especially how he's young. He's going to have those patches, of course, where he maybe takes a bit of a slump or maybe steps back to some of his old ways. You know, uh, maybe if he's second-guessing himself um, in something, it happens, you know. Of course, I'm sure, you know, he's a player of a lot of faith. And, you know, um, I, be- I believe that the more he keeps getting chances, he's going to keep putting he's going to keep putting them away, in my opinion. You know, of course, you know, it was a bit disappointing you know, that he missed it. But, you know, let, let's see what happens. Let's, let's see. I'm sure he's going to do well against Liverpool. And he's been doing well against them in the latest matches, so I'll be happy to see him, you know, doing well in my opinion. I think I'm not I'm not overly concerned about it. I'm just happy that he's getting himself in those positions to even score and that's a positive for me. So that's good for me. Yeah. Um and let's talk about the far the final part of the performance yesterday against against Osasuna, which was uh, Mr. Alvaro Rodriguez coming on for his debut, um, provided an assist with Vinny, but then it was disallowed, then came on and it made an excellent uh, interception in the final moments and then uh, got an assist for Asensio instead. And it was a really good performance by him in the in the minutes that he did get on once he came on in the 87th minute. And we, we had this uh, last week once again uh, with, with uh, Sergio Arribas in the, in the Club World Cup and... I really hope this is this proves to Carlo that you know the Castilla players can make a difference in these type of games. I think Alvaro Rodriguez he has every attribute that he needs to succeed as the striker of Real Madrid because he's tall, he's quick, he's strong, he's he's good finisher, he's got great hold up play, and that is exactly what you need to succeed. So I think for me, these Castilla players they they they. They are much more useful than the likes of Eden Hazard, uh, Mariano Diaz, and yet Mariano Diaz and Eden Hazard will get more minutes than them. I think this should prove to Carlo that Alvaro Rodriguez is ready to play for Real Madrid. Um, maybe not as the, the 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 main striker, but as backup, I think he would be excellent. To be totally honest, so what are your thoughts on Alvaro Rodriguez's performance yesterday? But, but, and let me tell you something um, before we move forward. Um, Rodriguez, in my opinion, was excellent on yesterday. Um, of course, even he um, took down some long balls as well. You know, and uh, he seemed like uh, I think um, I saw someone comparing him to Oliver Jude, and um, the way he um, seemed like to be a, like a focal point for like the final three minutes of the game. He worked hard, and he seemed really intelligent in what he would do with the ball. Quick, you know, his hold up play, his control, his touch is good. Intelligent player. Ancelotti have been saying that we've been struggling against low blocks because we don't have a tall line. Well, um, he isn't like the tallest, but he has some height and he can hold up the ball. It's something that we wanted for a while, something Ancelotti wanted for a while. So in my opinion, why not give him a chance over Diaz, in my opinion, to make a big impact. He's 18, Diaz is 27, Diaz is going to leave next season. And of course, Diaz works hard as well. We can always compliment him that he always puts in a lot of effort. But in my opinion, I think I, I think it it's, it doesn't make any sense, in my opinion, if there's no plans for him. If he doesn't have a future, I think Diaz is the man um, who will have to make way this season for guys like Alvaro and Sergio Ribas over Hazard. You know, it's just... Um, we have to, of course, look at the younger players over the guys who, you know, isn't going to contribute. And, of course, the younger guys are doing much better than we thought. Um, not than we thought, than um, we, we knew it, but, of course, we just wasn't seeing it. And I'm sure with more opportunities, they can do well. I think, I remember in 2015, I think, Arsene Wenger started the Arsenal go over Jude against Bayern Munich. And he had a decent performance because he didn't see it coming. And, of course, Arsenal lost, but the striker did well because, of course, Bayern Munich didn't prepare for 
that type of striker. I think if let's just say, I'm not saying I want Rodriguez to start to start in Liverpool, but I think if something like that happens, it's going to do a lot. It's going to show a lot of faith, you know, to the Castilla players, even if he comes off the bench. I think, in my opinion, if you're looking for a striker to come off the bench, if something happens to Benzema for like 20 minutes ago, I think he it shows that he in an opportunity, you know, you never know um, what can happen. Uh, it's highly unlikely, but um, it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to uh, the manager situation and just a five minutes on this. And it was last week, but I think the rooms have been quashed. But let's talk about Carlo Ancelotti. And, you know, Carlo Ancelotti has done a fantastic job at Real Madrid. But I think for me, it's... It's time for a change, you know, and change in the style of manager that Real Madrid appointed. We've, we've appointed Zidane and, and Carlo, who are both, you know, they're both great managers in their own way, but they're not tacticians. They're both not, you know, the the, the tacticians that Pep Guardiola, uh, like, uh, Jurgen Klopp, you know, those type of managers. And I think that's the, that's the type of manager that Real Madrid need next, to be totally honest. We've done this in a video, so we're not going to spend too long on, on each of the individual managers. But, uh, you know, the managers that have been quoted... Poch for me, I just don't, I don't, I don't think it's following that. Following that PSG spell, I just don't think he's he is not a winner in my opinion, and I don't think that can happen. He's an excellent tactician, and I think the the job he did with the lack of resources at Tottenham was just incredible. And I think that's the manager that uh, Florentino wants because of that. But I just don't want you know that um, he's just not a winner. He's not he's not um, ruthless in that way, and I think. That could really hurt us in Champions League matches, as as it did for PSG. Um, we move on to like the we look at the the three uh, Castilla graduates in terms of managers: Raúl, Ajabi Alonso, and Alvaro Arbeloa. Arbeloa, I think he will be the successor to to Raúl as Castilla manager. Raúl, I think, should move on to, to the likes of the same way as Xavi Alonso did. I think he should move to a Bundesliga club. I, I don't know why I've got Borussia Mönchengladbach in my head, but I, I just keep thinking of that as the perfect move for him. And then Xabi Alonso, I think once Xabi Alonso is done with Bayer Leverkusen, I think it is Real Madrid and the next destination, but he has just joined Bayer Leverkusen. So for me, I, I don't think that would be a smart decision for for Xabi Alonso to go straight away. So I don't think I any of these three managers are ready for Real Madrid. And then the third manager, which I think for me is my favourite, would be Thomas Tuchel. I think Thomas Tuchel has proved that he is an excellent tactician. He's proved he can he can adapt to the to the environment around him. It with Dortmund, PSG, Chelsea, and he's proved that he can he can play different styles. He can prove that he's proved that he can work with stars at PSG, Neymar and Mbappe, and got them to a Champions League final. So. For me, I think those three, those those are the main main candidates. Obviously, I want Hansi Flick. I think Hansi Flick would be perfect for Real Madrid. But you, what what are your thoughts on those those managers um, for success, succeeding Car- Carlo following his the potential departure to Brazil? Yeah, um, and let me um, start by saying I would I want Ancelotti to move on because. I think that if he doesn't do well this season, and if he doesn't, or if, even if he does okay this season and wins a cup, let's just say he wins a Copa and we fail to win the La Liga and Champions League, and and, and Perez say, okay, let's give him another shot and see. And he doesn't do well, and of course, Brazil is just going to hire another top manager. And I think that this is an opportunity for him, you know, to keep his career um, with another top team. So. Um, it's an opportunity for him and I would like to see him take it because I would hate if he misses out on the opportunity and then we sack him. Then whatever happens to him after happens to him and of course he's coaching um, Canada or whatever he said he wants to do or he doesn't have a team to coach. I think this is an opportunity for him and I think he has to take it. So in relation to his successors, um, another fear for me is that whoever comes in, um, these guys are starting to take a step forward now and Ancelotti is starting to see them over Hazard and Diaz like Rodriguez and of course um, Sir Jerry Bass I think it's, they will have to prove themselves again to another manager because some of these guys who proved themselves to Zidane when Ancelotti came in Miguel didn't play and Sir Jerry Bass started playing and he didn't play Marvin was loaned out you know um, and of course um, they're going to have to start over again you know so that's why 
um, if, in my opinion, if if it's according to what the board wants, that the board is going to back a manager in the market, then you're going to look at guys like Tuca and Pochettino, you know. Um, but if if you're going to be a bit more, you know, um, stingy with the budget, then of course guys like Rahul and Xabi Alonso um, might be the guy for you, you know, um, who maybe would have no fame playing the youths and the academy guys, in my opinion. You know, but if you're looking to win, I think that's the main thing. I think at the end of it, you have to win. Um, of course, it's going to be harsh for guys like um, in the academy who isn't playing. But if you have to hire Tuchel, I think he have all the assets of all the available managers now. I don't want to go back to Zidane. I think um, he did well in his two stints and. I think coming back for a third time would be a mistake for all parties. I think now at Madrid, at least we can maybe have an identity, a certain way of playing football, in my opinion, now. So that's why I don't have a issue with Pochettino. But, of course, he hasn't done well in terms of winning like the Champions League or winning leagues because he came in, in for PSG and didn't win the league. Even though they were behind, I still thought he could have done better. So I still don't have a issue with him coming in. But of course, Tuchel won, you know, um, the Champions League. Um, I don't think he won a league in a in a while. I think so. That's of course maybe something that can hinder him, in my opinion, um, in in players' eyes, you know. So I think, uh, in my opinion, I don't have a seat Pochettino because at least he might at least have a style and a clear understanding of what he wants to do. He can beat big teams sometimes. Um, of course, maybe at Madrid. Um, he can have the opportunity to dominate um, some of the La Liga teams because I think that's our issue, in my opinion. We cannot dominate those La Liga teams like we should. And I'm, I'm sure that you can at least agree with me that if we have a coach who can have a clear idea, we do much better in the league because that's been our issue. We spoke a lot personally um, because we are just not winning La Liga and we are wasting opportunities to win La Liga. Barcelona are much better now. So we'd have to compete with them. And to compete with them, we need to beat all those teams that we are struggling against. Or well, another night, I think, was the Suna could have beaten us. Um, similar to um, the game in, against Mallorca and Valencano, we lost them because we couldn't control the game. Um, that's why I don't have a seat Pochettino, because at least he has an idea what he wants to do. Um, it's not like I want Angela to start. I just think it's maybe time. You know, he tries something new, we try something new. Let's see if Madrid can be a bit more clear in what they want to do. Of course, Ancelotti did well. I have no see with them staying, but I would really want them to take that opportunity and for Madrid to try something new, in my opinion. Yeah, and yeah, it was ultimately a solid win against against um, Osasuna uh, yesterday, 2-0. Um, we're both happy with it, but the performance maybe did lack something. We did lose some chances, um, but we we'll head to Liverpool, head to Anfield uh, midweek on Tuesday. Hopefully, a win is in sight, uh, but we have got injury issues, so let's see what happens there. And apart from that, uh, Barcelona play today. Who do they play against? I'm not quite sure. Isn't I think it's Carlos. Carlos. Oh, Carlos. It's a tough game, Cardiff, but uh, on current form, Barcelona look like they just don't lose many points. So you never know. But they're missing Pedri and Dembele. Hopefully, they do drop some points. And, you know, it's a five point gap right now. They drop some points, suddenly, Real Madrid are breathing down their neck. So that is definitely not something that Barcelona will want to experience. So let's hope that they drop some points today against Cardiff. Um, so that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.